Hey everyone, Salam. Hope you're doing good. Welcome back, family. So, we're in chapter 12, and it's titled, Urging, Increasing Good Actions in Later Part of Life. These hadiths have been highly enriching. I really love reading them. It's like, you just can't stop. And when you read these hadiths, you don't even realize how fast the time goes by, and then you look up and you're like, wow, that much time's gone by. So, I mean, wow, it's just perfect. And before we get started... Aoud billahi mina shaitan nir rajim. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim. Alright. Allah, the exalted, says, Did we not give you lives long enough so that whosoever would receive admonition could receive it? And the warner came to you. 35, 37. Look at that. So, you had a long enough life to do good things. That's why the remembrance of Allah, realizing why you're here, and then making sure that you don't get led astray by distractions, right? Ibn Abbas and others said that long enough in the verse means 60 years. The hadith which follows supports this. Others said it means 18 years. Wow, 18 is, that's kind of short. 18 years old, you, well, you're still kind of a bimbo. Uh, Al-Hasan al-Basari al Habi and Masruk. Okay, so we got three names here. You see that? Al Hassan al Bari, al Kalbi, and Masruk. That's a cool name. Said it means 40 years. So 40 and 60 years, you can get that, right? Because, I mean, after tw 25, you start to really mature. But at 18, you're still kind of like a bimbo, you know? It has also been reported by Ibn Abbas and others that whenever the people of Medina turned 40 years of age, they would devote themselves completely to worship. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe because like the the carnal body is like a little bit different, you know? You are more relaxed, your testosterone, your estrogen, it's all changing, right? Maybe that's why. Ibn Abbas and the majority of Muslim scholars said that the warner in the verse refers to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Ikrama bin Umayyah, so we have another one here, Ikrama bin Umayyah, and others interpreted this word as the grayness or whiteness of hair. Allah knows better. Okay, so clearly you should have done a decent amount of goodness by the time gray hair start coming in. Weird part is, is I have had seen 30 year olds with gray hair. Uh, they start getting their white hairs because all the stress from their classes. So maybe now it will be younger. All right, the next one is uh, 112, Abu Huraira. I mean, so many. I mean, I've read so many uh, narrations from this man. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah excuses and grants forgiveness to a person until he attains the age of 60 years. Al-Buhari. So that's interesting. So if you haven't reformed yourself by the time you're 60, it's like, what are you doing? You know, got to get your life on track. You had a long time to start screwing around. Get it together. Commentary. This hadith makes it evident that Allah does not punish any individual or nation without warning them first. So there you go. A lot of atheists will come at you and be like, why are these terrible things happening? So I guess one response we could say is that, well, the creator has sent someone to warn you before it happens. You chose not to listen. Something happens. Who really can you blame? You got to look at what you're doing. Get it together. Two, the second point is that a person who was given 60 years of life and he yet he neglects the obligations of faith will have no excuse. At 50, I mean, they have the midlife crisis. Isn't that the time when a lot of men have, or is it 40? So, I mean... You're getting pretty old. 60 years old. You don't got your beauty to distract you anymore. Maybe people get distracted by their wealth? I'm not sure. And at 60, you can retire here in the United States. So it's like, if you're retired, you don't have your body anymore, and you still haven't really started turning your heart towards something better, are you bringing it upon yourself to create more drama for you? Could be. After the age of 60 years, one must not neglect his religious obligations, because... Then one is closer to death. Although one may die even at a young age, in youth one is still hopeful of life. That's true. You kind of have your pie in the sky, you know, 
ideal going on, which helps entrepreneurship, so you can kind of understand why it's there. After crossing the age of 60, to hope for a longer age while leading a sinful life and defying divine injunctions. Defying divine injunctions, I like the vocabulary we learn here, constitute a disastrous conduct. May Allah save us from doing so. Okay, so look at that. So if you're past the age of 60 and you still want long life, and you're not even doing the proper things that you should be doing, it's kind of bad that you keep asking for more years. Which is interesting because a lot of the atheistic computer tech guys, even the Wall Street speculators and such, when they get older, some of them don't do what they're supposed to, they're still out chasing tail, still going on vacation, still going to casinos, still having their weird parties and such. So you got to wonder, you know, they want to make it so that bionics can merge with humans with not transhumanism as in being transgender. I'm saying transhumanism is a really, really powerful ideology coming about where people want to start replacing their body parts with machinery in order to amplify their life. A pacemaker that goes on your heart is a small example of that. And a big reason why you hear Elon Musk and all these types saying, put chips in your brain, and then other people are saying, well, if it has a signal, it can be controlled by someone else or hacked into because electronics are subject to manipulation both in hardware and software, so you should be careful. Uh, but then that gets into a whole other argument, but you notice here in the Islamic perspective, at the age of 60, you should be turning to God. Whereas in a more secular, atheistic society, they're trying to find life extension technology so they can have more time to spend their money they made on Earth, right? You know, why do you think these millionaires, they're focusing a lot on like, get rid of my wrinkles and give me um, stem cell injections in my joints so that I can have this and there's a motivation of wanting to be healthy, but there's also of like, I want to be a young man forever, running around chasing tails, spending all the money, and being able to have the business that I have exist at infinitum. So really, you can compare this commentary, number three example, of that hadith of by a, that was reported by Abu Huraira about what the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. And you can see the difference in societies and where we're going. And the different values, right? It's very cool. If you haven't read a book on what those tech people believe with their transhumanist utopia, I, uh, Ray Kurzweil, I think that's one of the dudes. You can read him and you'll be like, whoa, these people, you know, like, it's just really weird. But a lot of those meetings they have in Silicon Valley talk about that. So you'd be surprised. 113, Ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him, said, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, used to make me sit with the noble, elderly men who had participated in the Battle of Barr. Oh, that's cool. Some of them disliked it and said to Umar, Why do you bring in this boy to sit with us when we have sons like him? Umar replied, Because of the status he has, which you already know about, i.e. belonging to the source of knowledge in the house of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Okay, so Umar, so Ibn Abbas w was the one who went to go sit amongst the men who were from the Battle of Badr. That's cool, man. You get to hear about what they talk about. One day, Umar called me and seated me in the gathering of those people. I think he called me just to show them of my religious knowledge. Oh, that's kind of cool. You know, like, oh, that's interesting. So Umar's like, hey, getting around these seasoned veterans, right? Who are really good at doing their job what they got to do bravery and all and then to bring in this man young buck and have him sit down showing them a spiritual side that's pretty cool for both the participants right who more than question them in my presence how do you interpret the ayah of allah oh that's cool see that's the kind of things i want to do that's fun that sounds awesome just oh that's cool when there comes the help of Allah to you, O Muhammad, peace be upon you, against your enemies and the conquest of Mecca. Someone said that when Allah's help and the conquest of Mecca came to us, we were called upon to celebrate the praise of Allah and ask for his forgiveness. Okay, so the conquest of Mecca, celebrate the praises of Allah and ask Allah for forgiveness. 
Some others remained silent and did not utter a word. Thereupon Umar asked me, Ibn Abbas, do you say the same? I replied, No. He said, What do you say then? I replied, That is a sign of the Prophet's death about which he had been informed. Allah the Exalted says, When there comes the help of Allah to you, O Muhammad, peace be upon you, against your enemies, and the conquest of Mecca. Okay, so that was another part, and then here's another section that's in quotations. So declare the remoteness of your Rabb from every imperfection, and ask his forgiveness. Verily, he is the one who accepts the repentance and who forgives. So declare the remoteness of your Rabb from every imperfection. That's a new phrasing of the same ideas, but think about that. Remoteness is a perfect word, because remote means just like utterly far away. It's very remote. It's not in association with nothing. So, Rabb being free from every imperfection. Yes. On that Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I do not know anything about it other than what you have said. Al-Bukhari. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, look at that. Uh, Abbas uh, gets complimented by Umar, and Umar says it in a very unique way. Not just that I agree with you, but they say it in this unique way, like, uh, I don't know anything else other than what you've said. Like, that's a way to compliment somebody that's very unique. I like that. You know, you learn a lot about the, the language style and the way of answering and conducting your speech is very unique in these hadiths, and that's why I find them very valuable to read. Commentary. This value of man does not go with the length of age, but with that of intellect. You see that? You see that? So your value as a human being in and of itself it's not just that you're older even though you're supposed to respect your elders but look how much intellect have you gotten you know do you purposely you know stay ignorant because remember they're yet 60 years old you know you're supposed to be turned into faith so if a young buck has more knowledge than you but you're you know 60 year old man what have you done the young bucks are outpacing you, and you are the older stag, and you haven't done what you're supposed to be doing. So that's probably why Ibn Abbas was invited to speak amongst those veterans, just to, you know, keep that energy and thirst and hunger for knowledge alive. Because when someone can demonstrate their knowledge to you, it can also motivate you to be like, you know what, I gotta go do this, because if they're doing that, I'm gonna do it, so let's get about it. Makes sense, right? That's really cool. For this reason, a young boy can have precedence and preference over the elders due to his clear understanding and vast knowledge. There you go. So you're not supposed to be arrogant and think just because you're old in age, you know, that you know it all. If you see someone younger than you, you need to respect their knowledge, intelligence, and consciousness thereof, right? Respect in exchange. So the young respecting their elders and then you know going and learning from them but also the elders learning from the young who have a vigor for religious knowledge quite amazing number two when a person gets closer to death he must devote himself more and more to the praise and glorification of allah and beg pardon from him so the closer we approach the time we're going to return we have to really focus on devoting ourselves to getting to know god which with our body clocks, makes sense, right? I think that's why God wants you to age, you know, because if you're always beautiful, everlasting young, right, you're always going to want to get that gaze from everyone else. You're going to just chase in that gaze all the time. I think that's why it's such a blessing, you know, to like, don't go get your plastic surgery. Don't go always trying to look hot at the age of 70. Like, you need to be focusing on something else because you're out of here. You know, you're going and if all you ever did was focusing in the mirror two hours every day, you know, instead of doing anything spiritual, you're really becoming deficient. So, dang, I see. Yeah, that's awesome. But I really want to be able to sit around in a circle and just hear how people interpret those ayahs. That just sounds awesome. That'd be nice. You know, that's, see, that's one thing is that philosophers will do is talk about, you know, epistemology, metaphysics, ethics aesthetics, you know, metaphysics, ontology, deontology, theological understandings, inductive reasoning, deductive reasonings, and you can kind of have that exchange 
And that's the aspect that I like about it. Like, I can do poetry off the cuff. You meet someone who's good at poetry, you can be like, hey, here's two ideas, and then let's go. Freestyle, right now. And then someone does it, right? You recite in a group. Um, theater majors do that with acting. The improv. Not the comedy improv, that's not what I mean. Like, they could do it like a, like a spot. And then here, we're learning with Muslims as well, is that the kutbah, the religious talks, and, you know exchanging knowledge is a value in and of itself you know that's awesome priests and monks used to kind of go to people's homes they don't really do it as much now you have jehovah's witnesses and mormons but those are usually missionaries who are not as well trained uh so it's harder but i that's what i want to do god willing that just sounds like a great way to spend your life you know many atheists don't get that you know they'll spend time coding and they'll spend time waiting for the new PlayStation 5 to restock. But they'll make fun of you if you want to do those kind of things. But, you know, maybe I want to focus on things that aren't just about growing my boss's monthly quarters. So he can go on his extra vacation every year. You know? Because he's not going to be the one who's going to judge me when I die. Really makes you think. I love these hadiths.